Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bubbles by Tinkerbot Games. It's for two to four players, it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play, and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Bubbles, you're simply drawing a card hand size of six, and then you're gonna get a certain amount of sand castles or bubble castles in front of you of different colors. In the deck of cards that you're drawing from, it's gonna have bubbles and action cards, and those bubble cards, basically ammunition you'll use to attack other players' forts. If you can get three bubbles on a player's fort and they can't stop you they're going to lose that fort but they'll be able to draw three cards and what's interesting about this game is as you draw cards you never lose them so if you have a hand size of six you're always going to draw a card when you play a card and when you draw three new cards you'll have a hand size of nine in which case you're never going to lose those nine card hand size limits so the more you take in damage the more cards you have to utilize which is kind of a nice little catch-up mechanic in the game but that's the basic idea of it play a card draw a card pass Play goes around until all players are done, which case only one player has bubble forts remaining, in which case he is the winner. Okay, let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you the game and how to play. So here we have the game Bubbles and everything included. Basically, you're going to get two sets of cards, the uh, bubble fort cards here, as well as the bubble deck, which will have bubbles in it, and it'll have action cards. That's an action card, uh, and that's a bubble card. You also get this uh, handy dandy rule book, which also explains all the different action cards and how they function. I think they're also called treasure cards. And additionally, of course, you're going to be getting a box for the game. When you begin Bubbles, it's pretty simple. You're going to take this deck here, and you're going to go ahead and shuffle it up. And you're also going to go ahead and shuffle these sand castles up. And depending on the number of players in the game is how many castles you're going to get. But the castles are randomized, so you just go ahead and deal them out. I dealt them out randomly, as you can see here. So no player is going to have exactly the same type of bubble forts, most likely. Then every single player is going to get six cards. So in this case, you're going to deal out six cards to all three of these players. The game can play up to four, however. And there we go. They've gotten all of their cards. Then after that, you're going to go ahead and choose a player to go ahead and begin. Maybe it's the last person who took a bath. That'll be up to you, I suppose. But let's go ahead and look at what cards are in hands. So he's got a three red. He's got a special rain bubble, which is basically a wild. A bubble gun lets you throw up to three of a singular type of bubble. So it has to be uh, these single guys here. You can throw up to three of them. Can't throw these guys, though. That's a two red. This is a hedgehog, which you can play on a bubble card uh, that was thrown this turn, and you can destroy that card. So in this game, basically you're going to be playing one card, drawing a card, and passing. That's the general rule of thumb. So in this case, he can go ahead and take this three bubble, and he can go ahead and play it on this player here. Three bubbles is what you need in order to pop a little castle. So if this guy has something in his hand to play to stop that from happening, he's going to probably try, to try and do that. He actually has that hedgehog as well, which means he can actually destroy the bubble that was thrown. So this player is going to get to draw a card for playing this card, and then this player stops this card and draws a card as well. Then these cards will go to the discard pile. The last card played is the card that is played first in the sequence, and it goes up from there. This player is now done with their turn, and now it is this player's turn to go ahead and play a bubble card. He's got a three blue, so maybe he'll go ahead and play it on this guy over there, in which case this guy's going to see if he has anything to stop. Generally speaking, the only cards you can play for free uh, that are specifically not on your turn are the ones that say free in the top right-hand corner. This one says you can play on any treasure card and send that treasure card to the discard pile. So it's kind of like a counter spell. And then there's a scrubba, which lets you remove a bubble card from one of your bubbles, and then you can go ahead and throw a bubble. Unfortunately, that doesn't work either. And then they instruct a bubble. You can play this card on a bubble that was thrown and prevent that bubble from being destroyed. None of these cards help stop preventing this little thing from exploding. So it explodes uh, because the card that was played, there's three of them. And in which case this player is then going to draw three cards from the deck after this player draws one for playing his bubble. Now he's got nine cards for the rest of the game and he can go ahead and simply, he or she can go ahead and simply play a card. Maybe they want to play this two bubble and put an instruct a bubble on it, which means that that bubble cannot be destroyed this turn. So no card that can be played on here can destroy this. Thus that gets discarded even though this player has a hedgehog. And remember, you need three bubbles in order to destroy a fort. So you can go ahead and put this underneath it, I suppose, in some way to simulate that there's bubbles on that card. This player checks his hand side. He's got three, six, seven. So he draws two more cards, putting him at nine. And then it's the next player's turn. The next player is going to go ahead and play another card here. Let's go ahead and play a two red on this guy over here. He draws his card. And then this guy is going to check to see if he can prevent it. This time he can't. Thusly, the card will stay. Now it is this player's turn here. He's got his six. He's good. Uh, let's go ahead and see. How about we play a two on this guy here? 
So when that card is played, this guy checks his hand once again. He can play that Flying Hedgehog to prevent that bubble from destroying him. This player will draw a card, and so will this player. So as you can see, the game gets a little fanatic. But the idea is, as these cards start flipping over, and these uh, players start drawing additional cards, you're always going to have a larger and larger hand size to prevent you from uh, giving you more options, I should say. Some of these action cards will let you move bubbles around or explode them. Others will let you play uh, cards on treasure cards to stop them from happening. All that kind of stuff. Here's a hand fan. Play this card on a bubble that was thrown at you. Instead, you can put it on another matching bubble. And then this one over here is called Wash Up Liquid. That says take a bubble card from the bu plug hole, which is your discard pile, and play it. And that's the basic idea of the game. Eventually, somebody is going to have all of their little castles flipped over face down, in which case they are removed from the game and so is their hand sent to the sinkhole. And then it's just the last two players left. If the other player gets eliminated, or players uh, in this case, then the last player standing, which would be this guy over here, is going to be the winner of the game because he or she had sand castles left. That's basically how you play the game Bubbles. Pretty simple take that style game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So Bubbles from Tinkerbot Games, what do I think about it? Well, first of all, it is a take that style card game. You're gonna be drawing cards, playing a card, attempting to place the bubbles on the color of the same type of sandcastle. Three bubbles eliminates the sandcastle, allowing that player to draw extra three cards, increasing their hand size to the point where eventually they have uh, all of their castles removed, in which case they lose the game. The player with the last sandcastle remaining is the winner. Very, very simple in nature. The game has some interesting strategy as for where you wanna place bubbles and how you wanna place them, depending on the number of players. In a two-player game, it's a very simple back-and-forth type of a game that only comes down to whether or not you want to save cards for specific cards that are played on you, and uh, there's like bluffing kind of involved, like is he playing a one, is, is, he, is that the only one bubble he has? Maybe I'm playing the one bubble first to hope you'll counter it, in which case I can play the three on you. So there is a little bit of interesting like choice as to when you want to play bubbles, how you want to play them, and whether you want to counter those bubbles played on your sandcastles, because once you get all three on there, that's it, you're done for. I like this game better in a multiplayer game. I like it with three and specific four players because it has more variance as to how you want to place bubbles. It keeps players in for quite a while because you have to choose who you want to eliminate and there's specific reasons why you might want to eliminate one player over another. But just because if you have a huge hand size doesn't necessarily mean that you have a lot of cards that you can utilize. There's very specific cards that will allow you to do certain things like the hedgehog and the fan and whatnot that are free that can be played on your turn, but not always will you have those cards and eventually you're going to run out. So you have to be very careful when you choose to use these cards and how you choose to use them because eventually the time is going to run out. There's also some interesting strategy, like for one, for one instance, you can simply allow your sandcastles to be removed, allowing yourself to draw additional cards and save all those counter cards. So it gives you a larger variety of cards in your hand to utilize for that one specific sandcastle you want to save. That's just one distinct strategy for the game. Of course, there's a lot of luck involved as well to take that card game in which you're just drawing from the top of the deck and hoping you get the best type of cards. You always want three bubbles and you always want action cards and you may, not, may or may not want the one bubbles. But there are certain cards that synergize with that, like the bubble gun and whatnot. Uh, the artwork in the game is fine. It's cute. It reminds me of little bubble-style uh, bath bubbles uh, involved in the game. You got the bubble gum gun and the, the rain bubble, all these different things. Uh, it's, it's kind of like this uh, vivid imagery of bubbles, right? So it's going to be more for kids. I think this game is probably a kid-style take that game. Most of you deep strategy gamers are not going to be digging this one as much. But for those of you people who want a quick filler game that kind of has this take back take back fa back and forth take that combat you're going to enjoy this game uh i would probably think of this game as one i would see like as i'm picking up my big board game from the the hobby store across the street uh there these ones would be down the aisle you can go ahead and choose between the cards and the little card packs and whatnot because it's a simple straightforward game and as you're waiting for company this is something that you can play that's instantly like it's an instant gratification kind of thing uh, i enjoyed this game it was fun uh, there's a lot of games very similar to this game uh in nature this one of course having the interesting hand size limits as well as the fact that you're protecting yourself but i can see how a lot of players might already have the game similar to this so it's really going to depend on you whether or not you want to pick this one up overall i enjoyed this game i probably wouldn't personally pick it up due to the fact that i have a lot of games that are very similar but if i didn't have a lot of games that were similar this would be one that i would definitely consider picking up especially if i'm taking this to a party with kids or maybe i want to give this out to a bunch of people at some some kind of gathering a little fun cute game bubbles the card game uh, I, I, I dig the artwork specifically. It's, it's a cute little game.